Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today I want to talk about how to find a vector function, how to parameterize a, the, the curve of intersection between the upper hemisphere so that as you can see this this is an equation for a unisphere and we want the upper half of that. And then we also want, we have the upper half of the cone, right? You can see that that's a cone equation. That's a typical cone equation. And then we want to see where they intersect and what is that curve of intersection. Okay, so let's get started. First, I'm going to just draw a sphere. Okay, and then, so let me just draw a sphere right here. Let's pretend that that's a unisphere right here, but then we only want the upper half of that, right? So we only want the upper half of that. I'm going to just erase the bottom portion later on, but then right now let's, yes. So we are drawing, we are graphing this one, okay? And then we also want to graph the other one. We also want to graph the, um, the cone. And then how do we draw the cone right here? We can actually draw it really easily. So let me just use a line two right here. So you know that if you're drawing the cone equation, then you're going to start from the center, right? This is basically the origin that you have right here. And then there is a cone that goes up like this. And then also it's not just the top portion, there is also a bottom portion, but because we're saying that we only want the upper half of the cone, so we are not going to consider the upper, uh, I mean, the bottom portion of the cone. So we only want the upper half. Okay, so that's the upper half. And then to make it more, look more like a cone, right? And then all I want is to just make a cross section at the top and then you can see, but you knew that the cone will just keep going up. It doesn't just stop here, right? So we'll just keep going up. Okay, so now that's what happens. And if right now, if I fill in the the X, Y, Z axes, then you can actually see what that whole situation looks like. Okay, so I'm just filling in the X, Y, Z axis right here. And so we have the X, this is the Z, and then this is the Y. Okay, and then remember, I said that we don't really want just the uh, the bottom portion of the uh, the sphere, but right now, it's actually just hard to how to figure out how to draw that. So hmm, I just feel that I'm just going to let's make it look more correct. Maybe it will look like this. I don't know. I'm never good at drawing this when it's 3D. So it still looks pretty 2D to me, but that that's fine, I think. Okay, so now what do we want? Um, we want their intersection, so you can see where they intersect, right? Because this is the, this upper portion right here is the, uh, the upper half of the sphere, and then this is also the upper half of the cone, and then where do they intersect? They intersect at this location right here. And you may say, what is that location? Um, when they intersect, at that location, they have the same Z values, right? All those points on the curve that that's, they have. They have the same Z value right here. So what we want right now is to set the Z equal to each other. Okay, we can make a substitution or we can simply just substitute the Z square equals X square plus Y square into the Z square right here so that we can actually come up with the equation that will represent the, uh, the curve of intersection, right? So how do we do that? Let's simply just do that right here. So since we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to one, right? And we also, well, for the upper half of the sphere, we have z is equal to, if you solve for z, then you're gonna get square root of one minus x squared minus y squared. Um, when you square root the z, you are going to get plus or minus in front of the square root, but because it's a half, z is non-negative, so we get the positive square root, okay? Same thing for the cone, right? So we have z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, and that would give you z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Right, so this is one way that you can do is that you can solve for z and then you set those two equations equal to each other. Or you can simply just make a substitution. You set this x squared plus y squared into here. I mean, you substitute the x squared plus y squared into the z squared. Then you can also 
uh, obtain the same equation. So now, uh, since we already have done this, so we are going to just set them equal to each other, then we are going to be getting, right? We are going to be getting the square root of one minus x square minus y square is equal to the square root. of x square plus y square. So if you square both sides, then you're gonna get one minus x square minus y square is equal to x square plus y square. And then do you see what's going on here? If you move the x square and the y square to this side, you are going to be getting one equals two x square plus two y square. So finally, we are going to be just isolating the, well, not isolating, but we are just going to writing it, writing the equation without the two in front of the x square and the y square. Then we divide both sides by two. So we get x square plus y square this is equal to one over two. Do you see that this is actually a circle equation. This is a circle with radius. Radius what one over square root of two, and then uh, the center. Center is at what? Center is at zero and zero. But now there is also a z value that you need to worry about because we are talking about the space right here, right? So where is that center? The center, okay, is actually at one over square root of two. Okay, you may say why, why, how do we get that? Um, all you need to do is to plug this x squared plus y squared equals one half back into this. So you can see that that tells you from here, Right from here, then do you see what's going on here? We have z is equal to the square root of one over two. So you are gonna get one over square root of two. So see that that's giving you that z value right here. So the center is at this location, right? This is a z value. And so you're actually getting what you are actually getting a circle at this location, that's where two uh, surfaces are intersecting. And it's a circle, and its radius is 1 over square root of 2, and its center is what? It's 0, 0, and then the z value is 1 over square root of 2. So you can see that if you look at the z direction right here, If you look at the z direction right here, then you are you are going to get what one over square root of two. Actually, this is not a good notation to use right here, so I should simply just do that. That will be one over square root of two. Okay, so now we actually. Uh, we already figured out the curve of intersection, but we still want a vector function for that. So how do we do that? Because now the curve is a circle, so we can actually just use polar to make it easier, right? So what do we do? We are going to just write the vector function. Uh, we can just simply just give it a name called R of T. And so because the circle is parallel to the XY plane, so we are going to have the cosine t and then the sine t that's in the x and the y components, okay, of this vector function. But because the radius is one over square root of two, so we are going to put one over square root of two in front of the cosine. And then we are going to put one over square root of two in front of the sine for the y component, okay? And then for the z component, you can see that because the circle is parallel to the xy plane, it lies in the plane. Z equals one over square root of two. So the Z value is going to be just always that one over square root of two. Okay, so that's our vector function for this curve of intersection here. So you can say that this is R of T. 
Okay, but there was something that I should still mention here. It's that for the t, we actually can just go from 0 to 2 pi, okay? Because that's a circle. So we, all we need to do is to trace out the whole circle, and then that's it. So how do you like this problem? It's actually not too bad, right? It's actually quite simple. So um, usually the strategy is that we are going to make a substitution so that we can find an equation that will represent the curve of the intersection of the two surfaces. And then after that, we would, based on whatever equation that we come up, we are going to come up with the vector function. Okay, so that's it for this problem. To help me make math learning available to everyone, please share my videos to others and subscribe my channel. It will give me support to make more videos. Let's work together to help students and children learn math more easily. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time.